Hello YouTube viewers, this is Heliok here. Today we're going to talk about NAS. All you need to know about NAS. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It was introduced in 1980s and it's a, basically a small computer that serves one purpose, basically a file uh, server. It's, a, it's nothing new, it's just a computer that is dedicated to doing one job and it primarily acts inside a local area network. It doesn't generally go to World Wide Web, although you can do it. And modern NAS unit also supports cloud support, where you it can act like a cloud, a personal cloud. So it is doable, but it's primarily focused for land, local area purposes. The purpose of uh, this kind of devices is to act as a backbone in a network. In let's say you have 10 to 15 computers, and they all have to work in conjunction. Let's say a team is working on some project, architecture project, or anything like that. In that scenario, this will act as a structure uh, storage backbone because you really don't want uh, each of the files scattered. In Think of it this way, like in this presentation, one slide will be made by another guy, another slide will be made by another guy. And if they are all in the their local drives, it will be a problematic to you know compile them all. So we generally put them in one central place and NAS does that purpose. And uh, it acts as a data point. Uh, basically you can understand what that is it's uh, for programmers kind of thing where uh, they are all working in separate parts of the code and they want to compile it all in one uh, copying pasting copying pasting is not a good idea it will only waste time so they generally use that itself as a central data point and you can in modern NAS you can do direct video editing so all the videos file there you don't have to burn your local drive whatever it is in your system you don't have to run it it can directly work on NAS and uh, it also provides safety and security security wise as in like you can have encryption you can physically secure the drive and uh, safety wise generally they come with uh, hardware redundancy in simplest term if one hard drive die your data won't be lost so we'll talk about it in more detail what it needs to work properly first of all it definitely needs multiple devices on a network otherwise you can directly buy external hard drive you don't need uh, nas second if you have multiple user it's then it shines then it's really shines if you have multiple users on a network because then you need uh, link aggregation stuff like that and it networks, uh, needs a network backbone because it generally doesn't work like you have a NAS and you directly plug it into your Ethernet port in the motherboard. It doesn't work like that. So uh, for a small user, it will need a router, in which case modem will feed the data to router or your router might itself has inbuilt modem and NAS will feed the data. Then you can, a uh, router can send that signal to LAN ports, send that signal to Wi-Fi and you can access it with your mobile and things like that. It requires a network backbone. Now let's go to serious part about this storage. Well, uh, hard drives are the main focus of this. SSD generally used for cache, so cache will help you to increase read and write speed, and it, it can also act as like a operating system because uh, uh, generally NAS are meant to run 24 into 7, so they were their uh, mechanical hard drives faster if you put the OS into it. So SSD serves a very good purpose there. But uh, of course, a storage server needs space. First of all, duh. So generally, we put hard disk drives. You can't put normal hard disk drives. There are uh, specific categories within each company that makes NAS specific hard drives. First was started like I don't know, I may be wrong, but uh, first popular one is done by Western Digital, and it's called Western Digital Red Drives. Basically, these hard drives have to have um, certain. Uh, features so to say that they cannot have power um, down and power of cycle they have to be running at uh, 24 into 7 kind of environment they cannot uh, they have to be very strong against vibrations because you will put too many of them in close spaces so they have to be very resistant to vibrations and if they have bad sector they cannot wait to read the back sector it has to jump on to another sector because the data is generally parity and put in multiple locations so you won't lose the data but if your hard drive is trying to read that back sector it will collapse the entire radar because it will think that hard drive died so uh, you have two options of course you have pre-built one uh, pre-built one will give you sleek design which is a thing if you have a studio where you want to showcase that, you know, uh, you just want to make sure your aesthetics are cool. Um, sleek design will be helpful. Power saving is a really important point. Let's say like uh, pre-built one is generally expensive, but uh, power saving will save you money over time. It's not 
uh, light and day, I won't say that, but uh, the power saving is there. Like uh, Synology, one that I like is around 5 bay drive, 1815, and it only consumes around 50 watt of power at maximum uses. So that's a pretty uh, low power consumption. So, And it also gives you complete warranty. So basically, if your NAS dies, you can just take your NAS and send it to the company and they will fix it. Hard drives, you can send it to the hard drive manufacturer. Or in some cases, they both can be sent into one location. Side effects, first, they are expensive. Uh, second, and they are very rigid. Like you buy something and let's say it has only one Ethernet port, you are locked to that. Like you can't add link aggregation to it. And it's not very unique. So like you won't have any learning experience with this and you'll just buy and populate it to a hard drive and you know, free. It's done. Then we have do it yourself. Uh, basically, it uh, first thing it gives you is tailor made feature. Like you need to put more storage, you will put more RAID card into your motherboard and increase expand your um, system. Second, it's unique. So basically, what you need, you, you build exactly that, and it's cheaper. But uh, it's power inefficient, scattered warranty. Basically, your if your RAID card dies, you have to send it to LSI or Rockstar, and if your motherboard fails, you have to send it to Gigabyte or Asus, things like that. So the warranty is there, but it's scattered. And uh, second of all, it is time consuming. Uh, but I will say, like, uh, if you are getting into serious and networking is your thing, you should really try to build your own NAS because the learning you will get out of this experience, it's literally a lot of learning. So it's worth doing it yourself. Thank you for watching. Like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, and please subscribe. Thank you.